Welcome to Arcade Couch, the best place to chill with your friends and get your gaming goodness every Monday at 6 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Ashley Hobley. Joining me today on the couch is Kieran Marshall. It is just the two of us. We're recording once again, just the two of us. I kind of wanted to cut that off like halfway through and then I was like, man, let's just keep going. Now we're here, everyone. We certainly are. <laughs> uh yeah just the two of us you know preparing for a big week big uh potentially big week in video games you know on the cusp of the game award nominees so uh we'll be getting to that we'll be talking today's episode we'll be talking about the golden goal joysticks a certain rockstar game is set to be announced and uh nintendo was announced another movie coming in the near future uh, but yeah, it's let's Bully kick Two, things... right? Yeah, Bully Two is definitely the game that's going to be coming out. After. Yeah, cool. Nice. Uh, but yeah, let's start with the jo- Golden Joysticks. Of course, they're the big, uh, one of the big awards of the year. Uh, this is the forty-first annual Golden Joystick Awards, which to me blows my mind. Forty-first. Yes. When did it start? I know forty-one I'm years ago. What, what, what is the actual? <laughs> what's year? that? Eighty? Eighty-two? What the fuck? That's insane. That is insane because <laughs> that means they've had it. It just boggles the minds, really. Uh, but yeah, the big winner, Larian's Baldur's Gate Three, took Let's home go. the most awards, picking up a record-breaking seven golden joysticks in total, including Ultimate Game of the Year, and Larian itself taking home Studio of the Year. Um. Yeah, very deserving. I don't think surprising in any way. Um, is Baldur's Gate 3 the ultimate game of 2023? I, I personally would say so, yes. Um, I think Baldur's Gate is very special, and I think games don't come around very often that does what Baldur's Gate does. Um, and then there's the, there's the whole conversation around Baldur's Gate and around the, the development time around it and why that isn't as uh, kind of viable for a lot of games. But I think there's also so many games where, you know, uh, say Kingdom Hearts 3 that was in development for what felt like a billion fucking years and that yeah. game didn't come out to critical acclaim and everybody loved it. Like, there were so many issues where it got caught up or um, you see so many games that get caught up in creating a game that was good back in the time where it was being developed or started being developed, but then just aged poorly by the time it came out. That isn't Baldur's Gate. I think even with the early access period, I think Larian did so much to really bring forward um, like the gameplay style, the ability of the availability of choice within its games. And then also on top of that, I think it spawned on top of it being a fantastic game, like it's actor performances, I think are some of the best performances in video games. And that's from a, a whole cast standpoint. That's not just from a lead or, or kind of a small crop of the actors. Like I think it's largely across the board of especially the, the first couple of layers of voice actors are amazing mm-hmm. and are really good and they deserve the praise. And, you know, they deserve to be in every kind of um, the voice acting categories this year to have yep. three, four, five different um, nominations. Nominees, them. Yeah. I mean, the crime with Baldur's Gate 3 is, that, you know, you can only have three party members with you at any given time. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's a funny one because I think, um, I guess not to spoil, one of the, the awards they picked up was the voice actor for... Um, Asterian. Asterian picked up the best supporting character, and which isn't is surprising the, when he is beloved across. The he internet. is beloved. He is probably the character I spent the least amount of time with in my party in my in yep. my game. Same. Like I have barely spent any time with Asterian. The fact that I'm getting to Act Three, where I think a lot of his side story goes into it, maybe I'll spend more time with him coming up. But like, I think his story definitely goes through some very interesting. Um, directions and explore some themes that aren't very explored when it comes to video games and in terms to um you know in characters in general but yeah i think the fact that he won and that he is so beloved yet me personally have not had that much to interact with him for in the game 
shows the depth of that game. It shows that, you know, I think there are several of the other side characters I think could very easily get nominated, get, you know, could win the awards yeah. the same, you know? Um, it's uh, it's all been, yeah, very good. And I think Baldur's Gate is, for me, it's very exciting for the style of game and the genre of game, you know? Yeah. That Baldur's Gate could come out and take over, uh, take the video, video game community by storm like it has, not just from a PC gaming point of view, but also on consoles or console um, currently. Like, I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a real positive sign for, you know, fuck developers you don't have to do live action games for service you don't have to do cookie cutter uh first person shooter games you can explore and do these different genres and they can succeed and they can do really well on top i mean of it. if they're really really good <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> if they're really good that's why i said they can succeed it doesn't mean they will yeah but they can to be fair like i don't think Baldur's Gate 3 was that much of a risk I mean, uh, I guess I think, the risk no, no, is no. in the amount of time and resources they put into it. No, like, I think it's a payoff, risk. But, I mean, Div- it is a proven genre. But the thing is, Divinity wasn't this much of a success. Divinity was popular, and I would say Div- Divinity has a cult following, but mm. Divinity doesn't have mainstream following whatsoever. Like, what else has Larian Studios made that is... No, but I feel apps- like a game that's like heavily into Dungeons and Dragons, which has only exponentially grown in the last ten years. Sure, but the style of game, like the CRPG, when was the last big CRPG in like I wouldn't even consider XCOM the same because I think XCOM's very different. That's a strategy RPG, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I can't think of any. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I since. can't think of a yeah, a CRPG that um not only kind of does the CRPG formula well, but like it gives people opportunity to do things and, and gives people that mm. vast sandbox of toys to play with in the game. Like it's crazy to think I am, yeah, two acts. Like I'm forty hours into a playthrough, and even though I'm playing through it, and I'll I'll get to the end of this one, there's part of me that would be excited to start another save as a very different character I and mean, make very different choices. Yeah, same. It's like, oh, what if I had if I played a different class, then I could have a different arrangement of party and like that kind of stuff. So. 100% and like there's a whole I'm playing this campaign through as a good character I know there is an entire campaign where I am bad where you can just <laughs> play, pick all of the bad choices like there is there is that whole side thing where it's not even like you're following the same path you're just making bad decisions it is you actively are making choosing. actively going in, you're getting completely different people joining your group you're getting completely different people um, completely different events happening within the game world I think is mm. um, yeah, yeah, very exciting. So yeah, very happy for Larian Studios. So let's go through the winners at the Jordan Joysticks. So best storytelling went to Bolts Gate Three. Still playing award went to No Man's Sky. I feel like <laughs> that's a massive. That's weird. Massive surprise. Mm. Best visual design went to Bolts Gate Three. Studio of the Year went to Larian Studios. Best game expansion went to Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven Phantom Liberty. Uh, did you end up finishing? No, I haven't gone back. No, 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 I haven't gone back since that was what pre PAX, I think. I haven't gone back. I think since... so, yeah. Oh, pre Spider Man at least, Spider Man two. Yeah, pre Spider Man. Um, yeah. I haven't gone back. I guess the time I would be spending playing that, I've been playing Baldur's Gate. So, yeah, that's fair enough. Best indie game, Sea of Stars. Best VR game, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Uh, best multiplayer game went to Mortal Kombat One. Best audio went to Final Fantasy 16. Best game trailer went to Cyberpunk 27 Phantom Liberty. Best streaming game went to Valorant. Best game community went to Baldur's Gate 3. Best gaming hardware went to the PSVR 2. Interesting. <laughs> that's that's very interesting considering I continually forget that it got released it's a thing. this year. And it's even a thing. I mean, to be fair, what hardware came out this year? Yeah, none. I mean, except for PSVR, the rock, the rock came out and it got robbed. That's what I will say. Rock is unite in this travesty. Uh, Best breakthrough or breakthrough award went to Cocoon and Geometric Interactive. Critics' Choice Award went to Alan Wake Two. Best lead performance went to Ben Starr from Final Fantasy Sixteen. 
<laughs> best best supporting performer went to Neil Newborn for Asterion in Baldur's Gate 3. The Nintendo Game of the Year went to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. PC Game of the Year went to Baldur's Gate 3. Xbox Game of the Year went to Starfield. PlayStation Game of the Year went to Resident Evil 4. Most Wanted Game went to goes to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And then Ultimate Game of the Year was Baldur's Gate 3. going to say, and I'm glad um, other um, award shows don't do this, I'm not a fan of the individual platform Game of the Years. No. I'm not not too big a fan of that because it almost feels like that's a constellation prize. Like, honestly, even though I, I enjoyed my time with Starfield, that feels like Starfield's getting like a cookie cutter game of the year. That, and Bethesda's going to give you something. Grubby, Grubby, getting, grubbing their grubby little hands, be like, "Yeah, we can slap that on a uh, on a on a game box or a trailer Hang now." On. Here are the gaming hardware nominees: PlayStation VR two, Turtle Beach Stealth Head Pro headset, Alienware three thirty four, AW thirty four three two twenty three DWF, Nitro Deck, Asus Rog Strix Scope two ninety six, and the Samsung nine ninety Pro. What a so weird, none of a, <laughs> what, a, what a really what a weird, weird fucking array of hardware to be. That's that's odd. Like I, that is so. How do you compare a a, a VR headset to a, a whole laptop, or or how do you like? I just that's that is strange to me. It is weird. But yeah, that's the golden joysticks. But Kieran, this week the game award nominees are about to be announced. They'll be announced. I want to say either Monday night or Tuesday morning. I can't remember exactly which. So I want you, Dick, Kieran, let me know. What do you think are going to be the six Game of the Year nominees? Easy. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, Zelda, Spider-Man 2, Alan Wake 2, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and Starfield. Oh, maybe, no, no, no. Replace Starfield with Mortal Kombat 1. You don't think it's Resident Evil 4? Resident Evil... Why did I say fucking 2? Resident Evil 4. <laughs> I thought I could see Leon in the French. Thank you. It was Resident Evil 4 remake. I could see Leon in the fucking... I don't know. I saw Leon and I went, that's Resident Evil 2. Because I don't know why my brain connects him with Resident Evil 2 over 4. Probably because that's the first game I play with him. No, mm. Resident Evil 4 remake. Um, I think that's okay. my six. What would six. would you would you what is your six or how my six they differ? Baldur's Gate, Legend of Zelda: Tears of Kingdom, Spider Man Two, Alan Wake Two, Super Mario Wonder. Makes sense. And uh, I'll say Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Another game I keep seeing every now and then randomly and be like, fuck, I need to go back and play that at some point. Yeah, um, same. Finish it. <laughs> I think the first four are locked. I think the, f- the first I mean, four are in lock. I think the last two spots are very wide open. I'm not I'm not even 100% if Spider Man's in that list. No, I think Spider Man. I mean, is. that is probably. I think it's likely, but. I I'm think Spider Man's. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So maybe, maybe Baldur's Gate, Zelda, and Alan Wake 2 are locked. Spider Man is pretty much there, and then the mm-hmm. other the other two games are kind of whatever else is feeling like your whatever's not, popular amongst the first. Yeah, like the judges. Like, yeah, it's I don't want to call it like participation awards, but you're you're there to be like you're there to make up numbers a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, Jerry. a little bit, kind of. I mean, you're the best of the rest, so I mean, it, yes. that's something. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting looking at the list. Like there isn't a breakout indie this year that would crack that top six like there normally is yeah I no mean, i mean everybody probably even though technically Baldur's, even though technically, I mean, Baldur's technically is an indie uh larian studios is an independent studio so they are the indie game i guess but you know <laughs> would it fall doesn't under fit with the dylan would it, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fit with the narrative would dylan play yeah dylan play hasn't it played on, it so i mean dylan it hasn't be. played enough of it so it can't be he's played some of it he played of it to do the uh to test it the other day to test the laptop a couple of weeks ago so that's true but you know he didn't keep playing it so it mustn't, it mustn't <laughs> be <laughs> 
All right, uh, let's move on. And this week there was a huge report. Uh, so yeah, Jason Stryer came out <laughs> from Bloomberg and said that this week there will be an official game announcement of GTA 6, that the reveal is imminent. Um, within the next 24 hours, uh, Rockstar tweeted out their own statement confirming the game is real and that the trailer would come in early December. Uh, Rockstar said, in 1998, Rockstar Games was founded on the idea that video games would, could come to be an essential to culture as any other form of entertainment. And we hope that we have created games you love in our efforts to be part of that evolution. We are very excited to let you know that in early December, we'll be released the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing those experiences with all of you. Thank you, Sam Hauser. So yes, GCA 6 is real and we're going to see some of it soon. Could- this is like a minor gripe, and I feel like I've griped about this in the past. Media p- people, oh, I know it's their job, but pre-announcing an announcement for another announcement, like leaking it, or not leaking it, but saying it's going to happen, I I just hate. I just, I feel like it's like pulling the rug out of from under Rockstar a little bit, being like... So, so who's the bad guy in this case? Is it Jason Trier, Trier. Or, yeah. Trier. Even though it's, I get it. He got it leaked, and he's been told, and 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 it's his job to report it. I hate that. I wish you it, hate that they leaked it. <laughs> yeah, I hate that he got leaked, and I hate that he's reporting on it. Um, because it it just kind of, you know, it would have been cool just to see Rockstar randomly be like and drop drop like an announcement video or something of for a save the date or something. And and I guess at least it isn't like her. At least it wasn't Shreya like dro- ruining. Hey, the GTA Six trailer is going to drop tomorrow. I guess that is all the facts about it. Yeah, here's game, everything you're you going to see. That would fucking suck, and that would annoy me even more. Um, but it is what it is, and it's GTA Six. I think it's you know it, it started the the internet culture or the internet trend of giving the hey take a picture uh, show us a picture of what G- you how you looked when GTA 5 came out and show you how to look at where GTA 6 is getting announced and I saw that everywhere um and it is of course it's GTA 6 it's no matter what it's, it's crazy like- that we're going to find out what the game of the year is uh in next week and then we're going to find out what the game of the year is next year in the same yeah. week probably <laughs> potentially you know um and and there's already been topic like I've already seen fucking podcasts with like the voice actors behind Michael and Franklin from GTA Five like kind of memeing about oh they're not in the game are they in the game you know um, I, I've already seen the 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 discussion around GTA Six is just going to be insane um, it's a it's a game that is you know still to this day you get random there's like random like pop ups in consoles or in Steam for gta online for gta 5 you know there is still a community that does gta rp there is so much has been developed and evolved you know so many people's favorite youtubers that are around video gaming have no doubt most likely participated in like gta races and gta content um it's it feels insane and even more feels insane what gta 6 is going to be in the current climate of society you know gda and, and grand theft auto in general has kind of always uh has been satirical like it's always been a satire mm-hmm. of what's going on in the world or kind of in you know gta vice city it was like what was going on at, at that time i'd love to see how the satire is for gta 6 now and then also i can't wait to see the reaction there's going to be some really unnecessarily pissed off people with content <laughs> in this game that's going to happen. It's going to be the sure it's going to be game of the year, but it's also going to be the game that creates the most discourse of next year. Mm. Because, I mean, yeah. I mean, the other question is, can it live up to the hype? Mm, I, oh, I doubt. Can it surpass but, GTA Five? The thing is, they did it with Red Dead Redemption Two. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 had the job of kind of outperforming and proving itself when it's coming off the heels of Red Dead Redemption. I'm just interested to see how they apply that same 
what they learned from Red Dead Redemption 2 and the storytelling of Red Dead Redemption 2 mm. into GTA. Because Red Dead Redemption 2 is so much more of a more mature and engaging storytelling piece than GTA has ever been. So I'd love to see how that transitions into being part of GTA and what the, the mission style is like and what the gameplay loops are like and, and, and what the storytelling aspects of it. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be crazy to see what kind of world they can build on next-gen hardware. Um, like, obviously, you know, the the world of GTA Five was huge. And that was made on a PS3. <laughs> yeah. An entire, like, two generations ago. It is a freaking crazy what potentially they could be doing well, it's even with like, GTA 6. Like, even when you compare it to, like, what Insomniac has done with Spider-Man games in the short, in the what? It was 2018. So in the five years between Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2, sure, mm-hmm. there's Miles Morales in there the leap in technology in between those two, let alone between GTA 5 and GTA 6. I, I hope Rockstar do leverage and I hope they do a lot around what's going to be in the game and do a lot to push the push the envelope. I hope they don't just sit back and rely on that it's a GTA game and just kind of rehash GTA 5 in a way in GTA 6. Yeah, they, they definitely have to do something interesting creatively uh or narratively like do you think we're going to get the character switching thing that we got in the last last um, game potentially is it going to be so time. crime well i guess it's definitely going to be crime heavy but <laughs> you know. yeah I, I think it'll be crime heavy i don't know if we'll get switching because i think switching was such a big part of the storytelling of gta 5 that i don't necessarily need it to be something that is integral to the storytelling of GTA 6. I don't think it's like a, a, a franchise-defining mechanic. Um, I think they've shown with Red Dead that having one character and one protagonist is interesting. Mm. What would be interesting to me would be like seeing like kind of storytelling over a long period of time in GTA 6. Mm. What if it feels like a... a, a... I don't know, Goodfellas or something like that. <laughs> that, Tell, that or The Godfather or something like that. Tell a story over like decades. That would be really fucking cool. Like a really interesting. Like I'd love that. I'd love mm. I'd love there to be um and I don't think we've done it yet in GTA, but like I'd love it to be a story of an undercover cop or something. Like I'd love it to do that, kind of integrating themselves into the world of the criminal underbellies and stuff and like have a, a story where it's like, okay, Okay, this is going to sound like I'm just ripping off the fucking um, Fast and Furious series here. But, <laughs> oh, no, actually, no, you know what? Ripping off Fast and Furious in GTA would be fucking perfect. Like, if you were just to tell a, a not a similar story, to, but to, like, the archetype of Brian O'Connor's character throughout a GTA 6 would be so fucking cool. Like, it would just be really, really fun for to, to see play out and to see how that integration happens and to build up these characters. and. I love these characters to have a mix of cartoonish and stereotypical and over the top characters, but mixed in with some like real heavy and grounded characters in there as well that you can actually get attached to. Or these over top characters having a way that you can connect with them and you can, I don't want to say build relationships. I don't want to mean like turn it into a fucking Baldur's Gate RPG. Like, yeah. But. Like have it so you care, like 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 they did with Red Dead Redemption. I think um, mm. Arthur Morgan's story is so special in Red Dead. Why can't they do something like that with GTA? In in and just have the setting be the I mean, stereotypical. Yeah, um, I mean, hopefully that's what they're aspiring to do. It's just like they also know they have to hit a certain tone that they yes. didn't have to hit in Red Dead Redemption. Um, but yeah. Hopefully, where do you think we're going to see this? Is this going to be at the Game Awards or it's going to be its own? Um, thing? I think it'll be its own thing. I don't think... I don't think they announced that there's going to be a trailer without... If it was going to be at the Game Awards, they would have announced that it's going to be at the Game Awards. Yeah. 
GTA is a hundred percent its its own thing. I it would be fucking cool if not just the trailer, but they did a weird version of it, like a state of play, but just for GTA Six at some point, where they mm. just do like little kind of here's half an hour, and it's just all about GTA Six because the game is going to be big enough and that much of a of a powerhouse of enough a yeah. of a draw to be worth doing that for. Awesome, yeah. Definitely something to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and something to like, uh, you know, tell your kids about so they can start raising their pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to have to buy it. Go out and buy. How far into GTA 6 do you think before GTA 5 sales drop? Uh, I think it's pretty instantly. <laughs> Just instantly they swap over places in the, yeah, in I the charts? Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I think so, 100%. I think, it, I think it's going to be the largest video game release of all time. Hmm. It'll, uh, it'll be, in, yeah, it'll, it'll instantly have the largest day one release, like day one sales and concurrent players, especially if they have a PC version on, on day one as well. Like, it's going to be fucking insane. It'll be, you know how it's that really cool thing you see sometimes where you look at your friends list on any console when a game drops and everybody's yeah. playing the one game? It's going to yeah. be that on an even bigger scale than we've ever seen. Yeah, except Dylan's going to play some random indie games. Dylan, except Dylan will be that one person on that playlist that is on that friends list that's going to be fucking playing some fucking, and he's like, oh, I've got a review to go do, guys. I've got a, I've got a review Just go private week. then. Yeah, hundred percent. Stop ruining it for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it launches with online? No, no, I don't think it does. So maybe that's the only reason why GTA Five sees them. But I, I think they do another launch. I, I think, I think online is once again, I think very similar to how they did it in GTA Five. I think I it's mean, like twelve months. I mean, the, yeah. I guess the real question is how they're going to manage online. I Which, just. <sighs> They can't do you do what move they... it over? Do you make all the funds transferable? Um, no, nah, you like, just go. You start you, from scratch, or is it again. you start from nah, scratch? You start from scratch again, and you still. I think you have like a, a soft kind of a period where GTA Five is still running, and you can still buy things. And it's like you have this period of time to do everything. We're not going to release any content for GTA Five, but if you're still playing it, you can still play it. You can still do whatever. Um, but I think for GTA Six, there is no carryover. There is no. It's a. It's a completely fresh beginning because i don't think i think people that people are at such a bombastic level in gta 5 online like in terms of like fucking flying cars like people have the equivalent of the delorean and the batmobile and they have underground Mm. cia bases and they have a yacht off the end of the island and stuff that you're too big of it's like this is a legitimate reason why in a new game you take all the powers away from a character so they can start building up again. Like it is, yeah. it is that. It is a fresh story. I mean, it's interesting because everybody's invested so much money into it. Is a thing. So, but the thing is, but this is again, a new thing. So, I mean, but at, yeah. at the end of the day, you've invested how much money to it, and you've got how many years worth of content out of it. You say thank you very much. If, if you ever want to go, and back I to would it, guess. They're not going to shut down online anytime soon. No, no, right? Like GTA Five, they will decrease the amount of servers it's on, sure, and like with the player base. But Rockstar's big enough where they could always just have GTA Five online running. Sure, I'd see somewhere maybe when we get to GTA, like closer to GTA Seven, GTA Five gets turned off. Um, like if they see the numbers actually, yeah. If it hits that yeah. point where it. it doesn't make financial sense. Or I think once, even once GTA Six, GTA Online, GTA Six Online is a big enough thing and a big enough kind of. Um, it's like they see most of their player base has gone across. I think at that point they might turn off GTA Five and say, "Sorry, guys, you've had your fun with it. Um, good luck." All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, during the week, Valve announced a new and improved version of its hugely popular portable PC gaming handheld, the Steam Deck. Not with a full-fledged successor, though it says it's still working on a next-gen version to launch in the next few years, but with a Nintendo Switch OLED-style upgrade featuring a bigger, better screen, improved efficiency and battery life, and faster Wi-Fi. It will be lighter and cooler too. It's also called, somewhat unoriginally, the Steam Deck OLED. 
Along with the introduction of the new OLED version, Valve is seemingly phasing out its current 64 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte options by offering them at discounted prices, leaving the future lineup to be 256 OG Steam Deck and then the OLED version in both 512 gigabyte and a new one terabyte uh, option. Uh, the Steam Deck goes on sale on November 16th, but of course, when you navigate to Steam's store page to look at the perfect options for Australia, you'll see not available in your country. Wap, 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 wap. Kieran, why does Valve hate Australia? <laughs> Um, because a couple years ago, when Australia is it because Gabe's living over in New Zealand and he's heard all these no, things no, about no, Australia? No, 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 no. It's because Steam has had the most problems in Australia when it comes to its fights with its gen oh, with the federal laws trade with yeah, the consumer laws. Right. That is probably what it is. Is that Steam is a little petty and <laughs> uh, they're just like, bro. We just not, you know what? We're not even gonna bring our cons, uh, our platform to you anymore. Fuck you guys. Yeah. Uh, what does this tell you that they've? It's only what been two years. I want to say off the top of my head since um, the Steam Deck launch. Should we get a new version? Telling you it's succeeding, and because mm. I think the thing is, it's it, whereas maybe if you compare it to the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch, you knew people were gonna buy it, right? Like you know, people were going to. It's fucking Nintendo. There was the software there that made it you had yes. to. Yes, exactly. There was right? no reason you had to buy the Steam Deck. Yeah. Steam Deck, almost the original Steam the Deck device, console yeah. was just proof of concept. It was a, we can do this in a decent enough scale in terms of units sold that we can do this viable, that people can like it, that people can use Steam. And Because I think the, uh, uh, the big thing about the Steam Deck when it first was announced with people being like, but how do I play my PC games on this handheld device? I don't have a mouse and keyboard. How the fuck does that work? And I think enough games now have transitioned to the point where they are Steam Deck support or they support that kind of style of platform and kind of, you know, as well as the ROGA um, and, and other versions of these, these handheld PC units um, where we see now that you know, yeah, this is them being like, cool, all right, let's release a new one. Let's probably release it a bit of a larger scale. We know which units not to worry about anymore because, let's be honest, even on the original release, who the fuck thought a 64 gigabyte hard drive in one of these was a fucking good idea? Not good. <laughs> um, but, you know, let's, let's cool. Let's um, minimize the amount of different versions there are. Let's, let's just ship two different versions with the, the two different hard drive sizes. And let's keep going and let's keep building up pace, you know? Um, I think I would personally be 100% in if I was even able to get one in this country, but a terabyte model? Fuck yeah, let's do it. Give me the terabyte. Like I, I, That seems like a good purchase. It seems like a good, um, a good platform for it. It's the second version of it. It's been proven that it works well. Proven that people enjoy using them. Yeah, I just think it, it makes sense. It just sucks that steam hates australia yeah i think it, it, it definitely showcases like this is a growing market um they de- they definitely want to keep themselves ahead of the curve and like the competition that's slowly kind of uh trying to enter it so uh but you know yeah if they're not going to get it, bring it here you know that just opens the door for azus to put rogers everywhere it'll be a uh, it'll be a uh, guitar hero versus rock band situation yeah, where yeah. Rock Band never came to Australia. Guitar Hero got here first, and so everybody loves Guitar Hero in Australia, and yeah. nobody gives a shit about Rock Band as a franchise. So, but yeah, I mean, it just you know again showcases how much people love handhelds <laughs> and how how good good all that stuff is. So yeah, uh, sad news this week. Uh, reading from the Verge, the not- day Overwatch League fans have braced for. It's finally come. Yesterday, Overwatch Active Media, parent company for the Toronto Defiant, confirmed its exit from Overwatch League. The company announced that as part of its agreement with Activision Blizzard, it would receive a $6 million termination fee, thereby ending all its commitments to the league. This confirms that a majority of teams have met and voted to terminate their agreements with the league, with each owner receiving a termination fee. The result is that the Overwatch League is finally ending after six seasons. 
We're transitioning from Overwatch League and evolving competitive Overwatch in a new direction, said John Nomas, Associate PR Manager for Overwatch League, in a statement to The Verge. We are grateful to everyone who made Overwatch League possible and remain focused on building a vision of a revitalized esports program. We are excited to share details with you all in the future. This is an ending that came like a whimper instead of a bang, and while that seems sad and kind of pathetic given the league's lofty goals of revolutionizing the esports being, I'm okay with that ending. Happy even. Uh, Kieran, I assume you're sharing those sentiments <laughs> of that uh, writer. Um, it died. It's a very slow and painful death. Um, there is, I, I guess for me, there nothing will ever reach the heights, or at least in terms for me personally, especially for Overwatch, they failed to reach the heights of the first two seasons of Overwatch League. Fuck, I have jerseys for the Overwatch League. I have two different teams' jerseys in my house, and I've bought multiple versions of them with players on them. Like, it was fucking massive at the point where. I How think, many Hawthorne jerseys do you have? Uh, I have two as well of Hawthorne jerseys. You're probably getting my third this year. Um, I mean, like, so that goes to show you, that, like, you've been a Hawthorne yeah, fan right? your, your whole life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Two jerseys. Right? Two jerseys, and that's, I guess, you, you. It's a little different in terms of, I guess, the jerseys kind of a little bit same the whole time and and the numbers um okay no it's exactly the same but still <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that changes is sponsors that's it yeah that's fair um but <sighs> overwatch did a, a horror oh, i don't know <laughs> this all goes back to like overwatch is the whole thing this this goes back to right 2016 overwatch 2 is some is game of the year, and the Overwatch. Blizzard Overwatch one. Sorry, sorry. Overwatch is somehow 2016. Overwatch is game of the year, and literally at that point in time, what the what was happening inside of the Blizzard development team for Overwatch was the team going, "What we've made isn't the game we want to make." We still want to make the MMO that we originally wanted to make. We've just somehow crapped out this hero-based first-person shooter that the whole fucking world loves. But even though the world loves it, we're not going to commit to continuing to make it that amazing. We're going to continue pushing towards this PvE MMO WoW-style game that we want to make. And that just forever hampered overwatch as a whole even to this point it, even and i'll talk about it at the end of this is like even to this point where you now see the overwatch team having to undo everything they you know i think so much of it it started with good intentions it started off really well there was big you know i watched the season one and two was on like espn and was getting mm -hmm. big support and it was continually on and like twitch had this whole fucking cool integration where you could like pick individual players to watch their just their point of view for the whole thing and like after game press conferences and and different things for it and it was it was fucking huge and then sure it didn't go so well in covid but like the game itself spent a whole season with one meta where it was really bad because everybody got really fucking bored of watching the same game of the same team being played, the same composition being played by the same two, like each team for the entire year. Um, I just think so many things about Overwatch, you know, just failed and fell. Overwatch League fell flat on its face, and then Overwatch Two was supposed to be its 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 saving grace. It was supposed to refresh and revitalize the scene. And in some ways it did, and then in other ways it really fucking didn't, you know? Um, I am the prime example of that. Fuck, I used to not be very involved in this podcast and in our website because of how fucking much I loved Overwatch and how mm -hmm. much I just wanted to play Overwatch and that I didn't have time to play other games because when I got home, I'd be playing Overwatch for like three, four hours every night and just play an obscene amount of Overwatch all the time. And then Overwatch 2, I was all there for. I was his biggest fanboy when Overwatch 2 fucking launched. And now, I refuse to play the game. And even, like, this last week, I've been tempted to maybe reinstall. And it, it, it's not even just reinstall because I love the game. Because Overwatch 2 used to be such a social aspect of my life that I'm, like, I'm sad that I don't have that social aspect thing. Like, I don't have a multiplayer game to play with all my friends all the time. So, 
yeah, it's just the point that I'm at with that. And then it, it's, yeah, Overwatch League just dies because of it. And, like, fuck me, I did Overwatch just lose a fuck ton of money because of Overwatch League. Like, and even just all the teams, like, the amount the teams invested, I think at one point all the teams, because Overwatch League gave them a a reprieve because of COVID, all the teams were something like $23 million in debt of what they should have been paying or something. And then to keep teams happy, Blizzard just had to wipe that debt clean and just say that debt doesn't exist. And then that's still, and that was before this year of Overwatch. And like all of the teams were threatening to sue the Blizzard over it, sue the Overwatch League over it because of the position they're in. There were so many of these like big um, company investment companies that had been not so much tricked, but like had been told that this was going to be an amazing investment. And it just wasn't, it wasn't a good investment. And they all had to bail out. And we've seen in the last 12 months, the collapse of esports of all of these big companies being like, esports don't make us money. We're out of here. It, we we mm. were lied to when all these people were telling us we were going to make a fuck ton of money off it. Um, yeah, I, I, it's an interesting point, And I think this is a sign for esports in general, but Overwatch League was just maybe the, the case study that so many other esports were watching and seeing. I'm excited to see what happens next with Overwatch. Uh, the Overwatch... Overwatch before Overwatch League in terms of esports was maybe its golden age where there was so much going on and so many minor events going on and so much yeah. so many big things happening that I'm excited to see that kind of potentially grassroots grow again. Blizzard are doing so much to try and fix Overwatch at the moment. Um, BlizzCon was pretty much... Uh, you know, in uh, South Park did the... the, the uh, satire of BP after the oil crisis of its CEO having to be like we're sorry in like vast <laughs> videos for a very long time. That's pretty much what Blizzard is currently doing with Overwatch and the Overwatch development team is. There are so many changes or things that they implemented that they're currently undoing. That they There's so many things that the communities complained about for years. Yep that at BlizzCon, they announce they're changing, they're fixing, and they're no longer doing. There is just so much of an obvious effort that Blizzard's like, hey, we know we fucked up. Please come back to us and please give us this chance. You know, let's please... We, we are showing you that we, we want to improve this game. Um, so, you know, the, the jury's still out on how that happens, but it, it just leaves Overwatch in a very weird spot. And, and you know, um, yeah. I look back on Overwatch League, it was great to support it in those first three, four, two, three years. Um, my love for it very much died off very quickly. And then it's kind of, that was very much a, a showing for much of what happened across the board with it. Yeah. I mean, you know, people were fans of the, of very short lived leagues before, you know? Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how they build back up because there's already talk of another program, uh, apparently funded by Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, that doesn't, Sound well, great. well, <laughs> they just won the Overwatch World Cup. The Saudi okay. Arabian team, which is fucking insane in all aspects of it, they've just yeah, they've just um, won the World Cup against every other country. So yeah, so I think that's changing. why they want to throw their money at. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I guess what happens to the players now? Do they try and get Whoa. keep playing Overwatch at this lower level, or? Do they think, switch to another competitive I think so game? Many, so many Overwatch... Well, I guess it aligns with... So many have already jumped ship. So many... The important ones have already kind of created themselves a, a market. Like, you know, fucking XQC, who is currently the biggest Twitch streamer in the fucking world. Well, not Twitch streamer, because he's on fucking kick for $2 million. That is... He, he was in Overwatch League Season 1. Mm. That's where he started. You know, there is so, anybody who is big enough or was big enough or was a personality has already done that. They already saw that they were going to get paid more being a content creator and they've already dove off. So many other really professional, like really talented professional players have already jumped off to play Valorant or to play other games. CSGO 2 is coming. Like it's Well, it's out and it's, it's growing and it's going to be. So many will see the opportunity to go there. I don't know what happens with Overwatch. Um, 
I think it depends on what comes out with the scene, what comes out in terms of viable money strategies. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's a lot still to play out for Overwatch as an esports. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see if uh, Activision Blizzard can ever rescue or Microsoft, I guess now can save yes. Watch League or Overwatch as a competitive esport. But yeah, watch this space. Uh, and then this week, also, <laughs> uh, Nintendo has officially announced that a live-action Legend of Zelda movie is in the works with none other than Sony. No details from, about the film outside the key creatives involved were revealed by Nintendo today. Still from Nintendo side, Shirogoro, Shigeru Miyamoto will produce, as he did in Super Mario Brothers movie alongside Avi Arad, who is known for producing many producing work on many Marvel films and recent Spider-Man and Spider-Man adjacent films with Sony. Uh, Wes Ball will direct. He is known for the Maze Runner trilogy, but he's also the director of the upcoming Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, the film will be co-financed by Nintendo and Sony Pictures Interactive, with more than 50% financed by Nintendo. The theatrical distribution of the film will be done by Sony Pictures Entertainment. That means you will see the word Sony before you watch The Legend of Zelda movie. Uh, Kieran, what was your instant reaction to Legend of Zelda live action movie coming? Uh, I think this has been rumored for a little while now. So, hmm. um, I think it was, I don't know. I don't think I'm overly excited. I don't think I'm really feeling anything in regards to it just because Zelda is a weird property, not a weird property in terms of to do. It makes sense to do this, but the setting for this is going to be interesting because Zelda games are completely different every time. Like they have the same base setting. Like it's always set generally it's set in Hyrule and there's always a princess Zelda or a character that represents Zelda. And there's always a link and there's always some form of Ganon or Ganondorf or other Mm -hmm. evil character. And there's always a Triforce. Like I think those are the bare bones, but everything else it's not like they're going to be remaking uh, Ocarina of Time or remaking Twilight Princess. or They could be. They could be, but <laughs> I, I doubt it. This is going to be something entirely new, I reckon. I think it's both the best way they could do it, but the riskiest way they could do it. As well. I mean, yeah. I mean, the two options are is amalgamation of everything or very new story. I think... So. Cause, so, I don't know how much you know about the quote-unquote timelines of Zelda. Very little. They are fucking... So... The timelines of Zelda are very split. There's already like four or five different branches that all link off of like this happens and then this created this timeline, this created this timeline. Mm. Like Breath of the Wild is in its own separate timeline, but I think Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time is in the same timeline. And so is Majora's Mask. Um, and all oh, they're the same branches or whatever. It's a hard, it's fucking, it's complicated even for me to just describe bluntly, the, like plainly. This is just going to be its own timeline branch. This is just going to be its own thing. If what any, I'm hearing is multiverse. Multi. It is Zelda does. Here, what I'm hearing is Zelda. Oh my Zelda. god! They're going to multi. They're going to multiverse is all of the freaking Zelda. All the links, even they're all going to rock up. Oh god. Yeah. Um. No, <laughs> I think if if they're going to redo any of the games, they would actually redo the story of Skyward Sword. Would make the most sense because Skyward Sword is like the origin of Zelda. Um, but I, yeah, no, I just see this as just being, uh, like, it's just going to be the Legend of Zelda evolution. (laughs) (laughs) For those who are too young to understand that joke. (laughs) It's Dragon Ball evolution, but. uh. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely does seem like it's going to be a tough not to crack i mean i just you just take it from the fact that zelda i mean link is a historically silent protagonist yes you can't really do that in a movie yeah i mean you can have like a stoic not talking very much character you know what uh, this movie will just be a success if link at some point randomly goes into a room filled with pots and just fucking smashes them all and just 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 smashes them all to shit with his sword yeah, that's that's how one asks. He has to break at least one pot. Um, but yeah, Wes Ball. I mean, I've haven't watched any of the Maze Runner movies, but you know they came out and they, they made went money. Off, they, they at least made 
Three of them. They 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 didn't go well. I think the first one was good. I think it was the same as the Hunger Games, where it was like the first one was like massive. It was diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah and then because it wasn't just. I do think that was once again the freaking the the writing and like the source material that they had kind of goes off the fucking where it's no longer anything mm. to do with a maze, but it's still called Maze Runner. Um, yeah, yeah, I still think it's it's part of that, but. Yeah, I I don't know. And then but he's also... he is he's doing the latest Planet of the Apes film, which they released a tra- teaser for. It looks good. Everybody's pretty positive and high on it. So is it you know. the same? Is it in the same vein as the like the recent Apes movies? Like yeah, it, it's is... just like further along the timeline. Yeah, I was gonna say, so. is it just like yeah, yeah? So, uh, that's I mean, on that front, it's promising. We don't know who's writing a script. Um, again. Like you said, we don't know who's going to be, uh, what storylines or what they're looking to do, who, what characters they're going to be involved in everything. But yeah, uh, interesting. I mean, people are concerned that Avi Avad is involved uh, because of his tendency to meddle. Um, but, you know, I think Miyamoto it won't put up with his shit <laughs> on the back <laughs> of the Super Mario Brothers movie uh, being a massive success. Um, and you know, well, very different though because it's animated, right? Like, yeah, the most controversial choice of the Super Mario movie is Chris Pratt voicing, yeah, the true Mario. Like, I, where this could have a lot of things that'll just be make you know, people upset. Yeah, the fact that Link even has a voice is probably just going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, so me and Dylan put together a casting the live act the live action Legend of Zelda movie you can check out at explosionnetwork.com. Do you have anybody that you'd love to see in the Legend of Zelda film? You know how I'm really great with actors' names. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to decline doing so. Because <laughs> <laughs> I. You know what? Chris Pratt should be Link. <laughs> And Tom Holland should be Zelda. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what everybody wants. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? Cast yeah. away. What was, yeah. Was go. I won't ask you of your casting because people should go over and listen to, to no, Dylan. Everybody should go read Laura. the article. Read the article. That's the one. It's not a listen thing. Unless, and then tweet us your choices. Look, if you want to go to our Kofi link and donate some money there, Ashley will call you up on whatever calling um, app, like media like profile you want to use, and he will read the article out to you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I will send you a pre-recorded message of the article. <laughs> I won't be live. Yeah, no, you should do it live. Pay more for the live. Only Ash. <laughs> okay. <I've... laughs> Over at ExplosionNetwork.com, Jacob has pumped out a bunch of articles uh, or reviews this week. Woo! Uh, so it was, yeah, he's got a review up for WarioWare Move It. Uh, of course, the latest in the WarioWare uh, range of games. He gave it a 7 out of 10 and said, this would be a fun addition to a family's game list, especially with the micro games being able to have up to four players. I plan on taking this over to my friend's place next time I see him as his three kids will have a blast. While the story might have little depth, it was fun to play and see the odd scenarios that were set up a must-play for family-friendly game nights. I mean, that sounds promising. I this I didn't expect this game to be a ten out of ten by any stretch. Uh, so to hear there's like a bunch of fun uh, mini games here to play. From what I understand, a bunch of weird stuff that you have to do with the Joy Cons. Uh, yeah, that's kind of all you really want from a WarioWare game. Yeah, I guess it's WarioWare. I've never found the appeal of WarioWare games, but I guess that's there are a lot of party games like that. Yeah. Uh, then he also did a review for Jackbox Party Pack 10, which again, that's also crazy that there are 10 of those packs. There is 10. Uh, he writes, overall, the latest Jackbox packs are a great edition of Game Night. The cost means only the host requires software and there's no need for fancy controllers, just a device to access a web browser such as a phone or a tablet. 
The drop-in and drop-out mechanic makes it easy to share with large groups. Up to nine and 10,000 audience members can play, making it an excellent game for streamers and their audiences. The inclusion of a variety of streaming settings uh, makes it easier to share with the gaming community, while also weeding out trolls. Uh, Jackbox 10 is an excellent addition to any game night and is a and its availability on multiple systems, including the Nintendo Switch, makes them even more portable and playable. And these latest versions of the Jackbox games will be added to a future games night. So yeah, 8 out of 10. Very promising. Uh, check out his review to hear about each of the different games in this iteration. Uh, I think the biggest one, there's T TKO2. So that's the only sequel from what I can tell this time around. So that's the thing. Uh, you also did a review for the JS Aux adjustable lazy long arm universal stand, uh, which you can get on Amazon or from JS Aux. Uh, you gave it a nine out of ten, uh, saying the lazy arm stand is a helpful tool for any home or office or on the go setup. Um, so yeah, that looks like very handy if you've got like a tablet or you like to keep your phone handy, uh, or you're doing you know content creation stuff like that. Uh, and he's also got a review for the J JS Aux shoulder bag for Steam Deck, Nintendo Switch, and more, uh, saying the bag might be a decent option if you're looking for a way to transport your portable gaming system. The additional choice of more generic model is excellent for those who have purchased other systems. And gave it an 8 out of 10. So yeah, check out all those reviews over on ExplosionNote.com. Karen, you've been playing a $15 game that nobody's heard of. <laughs> Randomly. Um, as I said earlier, we're looking for games. You have the choice of Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 you chose or this. chose this. Um, <laughs> if I did you guess we've been looking for something to play together for a little while. A couple of us. So, um, this is a $15 game called Lethal Company, which you can find on Steam, currently on an early access. Um, it is a four-player co-op game. Um, where you play as employees to a scrapping company where you get sent to various different uh, moons to salvage scrap. And across three in-game days, you have a scrap quota to meet. Um, and the biggest thing is you have to make sure you hit the quota. This game is like a first-person horror game, and it's fucking terrifying. Um you you touch down on different planets um and you get one planet per day and different planets can have different environmental features like fog or it could be part of a storm um different kind of different terrains that are generated um and you you kind of set off into these where you can buy items from your store once you've earned a bit of money like flashlights and a shovel which not used for digging the shovel is used as an offensive weapon to defend yourself um and you kind of go into these different uh, factories that have been abandoned to kind of grab scrap but these factories are not empty they have various monsters um kind of filled with them it's fucking terrifying this game's jank this game i will say this game's jank it does not it is not the prettiest of games um but it's a lot of fun generally the gameplay is multiple of you going out somebody is we've learned that somebody's staying in the ship you can like look at maps and look at different things and get intel for um your your players it's it's yeah it is actually scary there's been moments where um two of us have been inside of the ship and a tree giant like Treebeard has randomly shown up and started walking around the, the ship as we're kind of two of us are carrying for our lives inside the ship trying to help the other person get back in. Um, you know, the factories are trying to... You get into the factory, you pick up your, your, your scrap that you've got to take back to the ship and it's, yeah, it's horrifying trying to be like, okay, I need to now get back through this factory, but... I've seen something that has moved on my way back. And, and it, you know, yesterday I had aliens attacking me out of nowhere or um, like the, the face crabs from Half-Life jumping up and covering your screen so you can't see anything. Um, it's, it's so much fun. There is this kind of uh, 
overall very zany kind of humor about it you know if you don't feel you don't like kind of meet your quota you get your whole team just gets jettisoned out of the space airlock and it's game over um and the company just kills you off it's yeah it's fun it's crazy it's it's really quirky and a lot of fun so look if you've got a group of friends and you want something else to try um i guess we play phasmophobia a lot together so this is a game that's very much kind of in that same vein it is yeah 1450 australian on steam right now lethal company check it out it's a lot of fun yeah i just saw an article say this is the new phasmophobia so yeah it, it is very much of the same kind of working on money buying the equipment you're going to use there's stun grenades there's yeah flashlights torches whole like kind of more bags to carry things in um yeah there's jetpacks um there's lots you can get to so it's something uh yeah i I hope it picks up and i hope a lot of more people get to jump on it because it's a lot of fun i mean yeah it looks like it's doing reasonably well i'm scrolling through this review page on steam and i've seen like three negative reviews and one of them desperately wants to be considered neutral so uh admittedly a bunch of these reviews seem to be meme reviews so i don't know how much that counts but uh look steam reviews are meme reviews so we're good that's true <laughs> uh all right let us know what you thought of what your thoughts are on League of the company what things you're excited for for the game awards this week uh anything we've talked about on this show let us know about it by going to explosion.com slash twitter or jump into our discord at explosion.com slash discord if you want to help us out here okay cash just leave us a review on apple podcast or on podchaser leave us five stars and you can leave five stars or just tell people about the show and if you do want to help us financially or you want me to send you that link to a pre-recorded message of our zelda casting Head on over to our coffee page at explosion.com slash support. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we'll see you here next week. Same time. Same couch. Bye.